Okay, I'm going to show you how to use this character selection template. Um, if you click on the character selection GUI, game object in the hierarchy, you see that there's a character selection script component in the inspector, and that's going to have all the settings that you need to uh, modify this to your liking. So right now I'm just going to simulate the game to show you how it works. Uh, keyboard control moves the focus around. You can also use the mouse. Um, when you hit space or click, the button goes to an active state and you have this um, little splash screen temporarily. Also, though you can't see it right now, each of these um, updates the information here on the left. So this texture is different for every um, box and the properties here are different for every box. So they'll change um, once we modify those in the inspector here. So uh, in this first drop down settings, uh, use universal selected texture. That's that broken glass texture that went over. Um, if you want to use the same texture for every character here, click that box and then drag the texture into here. If you want to use a different texture for every character uh, that has some graphic in it that's character specific, then leave this unchecked and um, you can modify that texture manually um, down here. Use secondary textures, that refers to this texture right here, the updates with each avatar that uh, has the focus. The secondary texture rect is the origin and the width and the height. So that's the x and y origin and the x and or the width and the height of that texture. So those are the settings. The avatar layout, I'm going to uncheck lock grid size. Um, the grid origin is this point right here, so that's where the grid starts. You can drag that around or type in your own um, information here. Uh, grid size here, you can also drag around or type. I'm going to leave it at 2x2. Two two. Um, if for any reason this gets messed up or you get some errors thrown, just hit reset grid and avatars. It'll set it back to a 2x2 two two grid with the default images and also the default stats. So if you change anything in these avatars, um, clicking this button will erase all your changes. So make sure you really want to do that. Uh, that's actually why this lock grid size button is here. So once you have the grid size that you're happy with, check that button and you won't be able to um, modify this stuff without unlocking it there. Uh, spacing between avatars is this space right here. This is the X space and the Y space. Leave that at 40 by 25. Avatar image dimensions are the size of these avatars. You can move those around also. Um, if you don't want to enter these in manually and you just want to use the um, normal state of the first character's button, you can do that by clicking this right here. And it'll reset the image size of these avatars to the first character's normal state. Um, so going down here into the avatars drop down. Um, we have drop downs for every one of these characters as the grid size increases. These characters, uh, the character list repopulates and uses the default um, textures and null for all of the properties here. If you click on one of these to drop it down, you can change the name. And uh, right now, these are some preset properties strength, speed, intelligence. Um, it's totally arbitrary. Uh, if you want to change that, just type it in my hero and um, strength 8 speed whatever you want you can put in here and then um, if you uh, simulate the game right now you can see that in effect where that's just for that first character there if you move away from it it goes back to the default um, if you want to change the normal state, right now I'm going to um, go into my project window. There's actually some supplied avatars here. I'm just going to drag this human here, and then human hover, and human active. Um, I'm going to change this grid size to 2x2 two two also. Um, so again, notice changing the grid size does not keep the settings that you've already applied. So make sure um, you know how many you need before you change it. Um, do that again. Human or hover in our active state. 
um, the selected overlay I'll pop this in so that just says you've selected human on it secondary texture is down here in the secondary textures folder let's put the character one texture in um, right now I'm just using a map that'll update um, the location of this fictional character and then the name let's not up human and then I'll put those um, stats in again I'm gonna collapse that then open up character 2 and pop in monster hover in active states uh, I'm just gonna do this you get the idea for the rest but when you uh, simulate this now you can see the whoops I'll put this in so it's more obvious uh, the secondary texture here when you simulate it you can see that the uh, that little map updates on the left also the stats below it update and um, they each have a hover normal active state and their own um, selected texture here again if you want to use one texture for everyone check that and uh, oops, check that then everyone will use the selected texture that you designated there okay so those are the uh, avatar settings there uh, the stats refer to these stats right here if you want to use them or not just check that on and off and they will disappear um, the position this is the origin so you can drag that around up and down and left and right um, you can rename the stats if you want your intelligence could be called wisdom instead if you want to change uh, the amount of stats you have change this value here um, you can make it smaller or larger every time you change it though um, as you can see it reflected here in your um, avatar characters um, before you try modifying anything else though click refresh stats um, that will change here the fact that you have um, an extra um, stat here it actually the avatar is its own class so it needs um, to get regenerated every time you change the statistics which are properties of that class or member variables of that class so just make sure if you change the value of this um, bigger or smaller hit refresh stats and that'll update um, your avatar class uh, the font of the stats is here you can just drag that from your project window if you want to use one um, so you can use all these settings or you can um, with a font there do some modification here if you want to change the font size to make it bigger um, and maybe the font style you can do that and then hit apply and it'll re-import the font um, just like this is right here uh, works the same way and then the line spacing um, changes the spacing of the stat layout so between the line spacing and the origin here and the font size and style you can uh, customize this pretty well uh, the last section here this drop down is the sounds uh, there are three sounds currently there's some background music there's a uh, little tick when you move from character to character with the keyboard and there's a sound that plays when you select a character so when you simulate it right now you should hear some background music if you use the arrow keys you can hear a click and if you select something you heard a little ding so that's the basics of how to use this interface uh, if you want to customize the input if you don't want to use the arrow keys or the space bar you can go into character selection dot js in the character selection menu folder open that up in the update function there are some lines here uh, under the input keys comment if you want to use another key other than space just replace key code dot space with another key code uh, right now it's mapped to that and to get button or get mouse button down zero which is the left uh, mouse button and same thing with the uh, arrow keys right now it's mapped to be the up, down, left, and right arrow keys. If you want to use 
something different if you're using a console or if you want to use WSAND, um, just change that here and use your own, um, use different key codes. Right now, the background image, if you want to change that, which I suspect you will, uh, is right here. It's a child of the character selection GUI game object called background. Click on that, and it's a GUI texture component there. So just change the texture uh, right here.